Welcome again to Dream Body Fitness Health Intelligence. Today I'm going to take you through seven steps on how to lose weight without exercise or diet. We're living in very exciting times. We're living in a technologically advanced age. We're living in a medically advanced age to a point where we can do a routine heart op open heart operation, but we don't know how to lose one kilo of fat and keep it off. We're sending tourists to the moon, but obesity has become one of the things that is killing most of us. So we're prolonging our lives, but we're only prolonging the worst part of our lives. We are living longer, but we are living longer, more medicated. We have a pill for every pain. Now, if you come to South Africa, the country where I live, and to be fortunate enough to be living in the suburbs, if you look at statistics, every street corner in Santon has a training facility. We either have a CrossFit, uh, a CrossFit box gym, we either have a boxing gym, we have a big commercial gym, you will have people that uh, you have, you are running and uh, walking clubs, you will have find uh, clubs where people are golfing, you will find all these amenities. We're not short of amenities. In fact, South Africa has one of the highest gym penetration in the world, not only in Africa. We have one of the highest gym going population in the world. The average South African in the suburbs goes to the gym on average five times a week. Unlike in places like LA in America where people are going on average three times. If you look at diets now, we have more diets than we've ever had in our whole existence. We have more dietitians that are graduating every single day and every single gym that I know has a local based dietitian. If you go to our supermarkets, Woolies, Pick and Pay, Checkers, now you've got aisles and aisles of low fat or healthy food diets. If you go to any bookstore, you will find aisles, bookshelves that are heavy, heavily pregnant with books on weight loss and books on healthy living. Now, if you talk to Mr. Google himself, just Google weight loss, you'll find over 5 million articles talking about weight loss. So we have all this information on our fingertips. But if you look at statistics, you will be mistaken you will be mistaken and I forgive you for this, for thinking that we're healthier than we've ever been. But statistics slap us in the face. The truth is, we've never been this fatter and we've never been as unhealthy as we are now. Now, as much as most people, are, most doctors and most trainers, they've replaced that if somebody is overweight, they are telling us what not to eat and what to do. So we've replaced and or we think that the solution to obesity is simply training and dieting. And the more we diet, the fatter we become. The harder we train, the fitter we become, but the unhealthy we become. Why? Because most doctors, most dietitians, and most trainers are not trained in the psychological and physiological aspect of our lives. So I will take you through the softer side of weight loss where I'm not going to dwell on diet, and I'm not going to dwell on exercise at all. The first thing here, the first thing here is your core beliefs. This is the first thing that I'm going to dwell on. Your core beliefs. Your core belief is simply based on, it's based on your upbringing, your early child care givers, your parents, your teachers, your elders, your ch church, um, your church environment, your environment. Personally, I didn't grow up in an environment where I ever saw my father or mother doing exercise. So to pay for exercise, it's a very strange phenomenon for me. It's something that I hate to learn. And unlike people, if I move, when I moved into Santon, the difference between Santon and where I grew up in Santon. If you wake up on a Saturday, Sunday morning, there's thousands and thousands of people engaged in physical exercises. 
people dressed in fancy outfits, people cycling, there are people going to play golf, there are people walking their dogs, there are people running, there are people walking in the park. People are engaged in uh, physical exercise. If you go to poorer areas, and a good example here, we'll use a place like Alex, which is very next to Santon. When you go there on a Saturday morning, Sunday morning, you will find people are still sleeping, people are drinking on the streets, people are busy watching television. Now, all these environments, they, they create who you are. Your experience creates your future. Now, in most cases, also depending, if you never saw your parents exercising, you never saw your mother eating a salad, you never saw your father leaving the house in the morning to go running, that becomes one of the things that as you grow up, you have to overcome that most of us don't focus on. Now, if you look at your core belief here, there are things that we believe that were indoctrinated into us that we think that we become those things. And one of these is, if you think, do you think you're worthy spending money on yourself? You're either worthy or you're unworthy. Because if you don't feel that you're worth it, chances are you're not going to invest money in exercise. You're not going to invest money in eating right. Do you love yourself or do you don't love yourself? Exercise is self-love. Eating right is self-love. These are all things that most people don't really focus on. Do you believe that you have the capability to do it? Because I'm the best trainer. I can give you the best eating plan. I can give you the best exercise. But at the end of the day, if you don't believe in yourself, it, is, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Unless I understand that and work on the soft side of your mindset, it's not going to work. So we have to look at these things and we have to focus on that. What is your belief system uh, when it comes to that? Do you believe that you've got your mother's genes that you never lose weight? Do you believe that uh, you, exactly like your father, nothing can change? Now, all these things determine and they decide how you're going to, how you're going to perform. The next thing here, how you believe yourself creates your thoughts. Your thoughts don't come from a vacuum. Your thoughts have to come from somewhere. And in most cases, your thoughts are always an extension of your belief system. Your thoughts come from what you think of yourself and you start thinking it. And if your belief system is negative, if it's disempowering, if you're telling yourself you don't have the ability, if you keep on telling yourself that you're lazy, if you keep on telling yourself that you have bad genes, if you keep on telling yourself that you'll always be fat, that's what your thought is. Your thoughts are also negative. Now, how do we tackle that? We cannot tackle your thought process until we tackle your belief system because what you think goes back to reinforce the negativity that you, you, your belief system tells you about yourself. What you think about yourself leads to your interpretation. There is no, there is no thought that you do not give meaning to. What you tell yourself, what you think, how many times have you said, let me, go, let, me go try, let me go try losing weight. Let me try eating right. How many times have you told yourself that? And chances are, you've told yourself based on your previous experience that I've tried this so many times. I'll always do this for three weeks and I give up. And faithful as gospel, chances are after three weeks mentally, you're ready to, to give up. So your interpretation gives your thought meaning. Now, your interpretation will always give you emotions, how you feel. Now, we all know that emotions create motion. Emotions create motions. What you wire, in most cases, fires together. What are your emotions? Now, remember, everything from here is negative. You've always thought that you'd always be fat because your mother is fat. You've always thought that you'd always be overweight because your father is overweight. You've always thought that you are lazy because your mother is lazy. You've always thought that you are lazy because your father is lazy. People have always told you, and that has always led to you thinking that I come from a family of fat people. 
that automatically makes you your interpretation here is i'm a fat person you become your thoughts you don't even separate these two and think your thoughts could be wrong and that thought because it's negative what kind of emotion is it going to be here there is no way it's going to be a positive emotion it's going to be what a negative emotion and a negative information motion straight away is going to lead to a behavior what will this behavior be this behavior is not going to be you going to gym to exercise this behavior is not going to be you i am trying to eat healthy the behavior will be negative what is the point the point is whether i go to gym or not i'll always be fat so it's easier for me to sit and watch television it's easier for me just to sleep in it's easier for me to eat bad and by doing that automatically this behavior reinforces it it does reinforce what your core belief now this becomes a vicious cycle you've seen people and i see it a lot in the gym somebody that is most girls that will always talk to me about weight loss she's 10 years old and i'll see the same same woman 10 20 years later which is she's 20 or she's 30 and he's 30 it means she's been trying to lose weight for the last 20 years but she hasn't the only thing she's lost is time and money she's never lost weight she loses the weight and puts on the weight back and this is becomes the negative uh, loop that she keeps on living in so how do we change that whether i give you an exercise plan and whether i put you on an eating plan that won't help you because mentally and emotionally you're not in the right space for you to do that so what do we do here at dream body fitness the dream body fitness we change this completely we flip it we don't do what everybody else does rather than starting outside inside we start inside outside what do we do we start straight from here so we have to change your belief system your belief system is we have to do the hard work we have to change your software because what most people do what most programs do what most gyms do they try to change the writings on the computer screen it doesn't matter even if you break the screen because at the end of the day the monitor only reflects what the software is if i have to use the technology link over here and the software here is it's your belief system by changing your belief system from being disempowering to empowering by dispelling your myth and giving you facts because here we have to start using facts and this is where research and science comes in this is not a guesswork this is not me th uh, sucking out of my thumbs and then throwing it in your face it's to prove to you how we can change this you not who you think you are if it is disempowering we have to break it down that automatically will change you from being disempowering beliefs to positive thoughts positive interpretation positive emotions positive behavior reinforcement and this cycle automatically now changes and it becomes that and that is exactly how we do it at dream body fitness we will always fix you inside out because you've tried it your way you've tried to exercise as much as you can you've tried to eat as little as you can you've lost weight initially but in the end you failed but it's not you failing it's only that the strategy you're using the system you're using it's against you it's not the answer that you have to change if so many people keep on getting the same answer and the answer is wrong then we have to shift the spotlight and shine it on the question because if the question is wrong it doesn't matter how clever you are the answer is going wrong let me know how you feel about this let me know which of these areas are you struggling with and how can i assist you uh, click on the link below and I will give you more information about our programs. I believe in you. Take care of yourself and God bless.